nano service the definition is cavity varnish is defined as a natural gum cobalt or resin dissolved in an organic solvent such as chloroform acetone or ether this is how a cavity varnish has to be defined beat it don't say anything more so it is a varnish defined is defined as a natural gum cobalt or resin dissolving an organic solvent such as chloroform acetone or ether what are the functions of a varnish the varnish inhibits micro leakage under the respiration prevent penetration of corrosion by products that is amalgam blues into underlying tooth structure inhibits acid penetration into dentine tubules seals the dentine tubules temporarily prevents post operative sensitivity and the cavity varnish acts as a barrier and prevents penetration of oral fluid into the underlying dentine from the tooth this Uh, respiration interface so first thing it inhibits micro leakage that is chemicals can cannot go from the hello i think somebody needs to mute their mic there's some voice coming please so inhibit micro leakage so chances of any fluid irritating the pulp is prevented because this forms a protective uh, uh, coating then you prevent corrosion by products amalgam blues then goes your next question what is amalgam blues amalgam blues is discoloration of the dentine and the tooth happening because of corrosion by products from amalgam reaching or in going into the dentinal tubules and onto the enamel um uh, enamel rod how does this happen that is because when you are using amalgam alloy which phase causes corrosion gamma 2 phase the tin mercury phase reacts with the unreacted mercury and releases this and this uh, tin that is released goes and discolors all this by product right but if you are covering it or protecting it with a varnish it will not penetrate the underlying dentine tissue right so very often you can get side questions or corollary questions happening when you uh, put in these answers acid penetration so if you are using zinc phosphate which is highly acidic okay or using zinc oxide eugenol right now definitely not zinc oxide eugenol but if you are using zinc phosphate the acid will penetrate deep so it is better to apply the varnish and then apply the zinc phosphate so the acid doesn't go into the dentine and tubules and it can seal the tubules temporarily and or automatically because if you are not if you are protecting the tubules the chances of post operative sensitivity are less the cavity varnish prevents oral fluids going into the underlying dentine from the tooth restoration interface so it functions very very well but it prevents only chemical micro leakage this is something you need to understand now the question comes that very often what are the functions of zinc oxide eugenol and zinc phosphate when both are used as a base definitely they are very strong very effective but zinc oxide eugenol also has got a beautiful optogenic effect or a palliative effect or a healing effect on the dental pulp now for that healing effect to take place it should be in contact with the dentine so if you are going to apply varnish and then put zinc oxide eugenol it's not going to work the eugenol zinc oxide eugenol will not get be able to do its healing effect so in some res- uh, base materials you put the base first and then the varnish the viva question here is if you are using zinc phosphate will you put the varnish first or the phosphate base first obviously the varnish goes in first and then the phosphate because the phosphoric acid will being highly acidic will penetrate the dentinal tubules and irritate the underlying dental pulp next question what is the setting reaction of zinc phosphate what is the ph of zinc phosphate right so when you are answering you need to be i need to be doing this thing understanding these points very well now when we talk about corrosion next thing is can you define corrosion what is tarnish obviously tarnish is surface discoloration what is corrosion corrosion is surface roughening or there is chemically it goes gets spoiled now what are the different types of chemical uh, corrosion you have a wet corrosion you have a dry corrosion then in that again you have got 
concentration cell corrosion the similar cell so it is never ending actually each of these topics can become a short notes or even a full question if you read anu sawal dental material i mean this is one book that i have been reading from my student time skinner philips and uh, read it step by step slowly i'm sure you will be able to understand each thing all these things are mentioned over there okay so here you can see the varnish this is a varnish that is available now you dry your cavity this is your cavity here and how do you apply the varnish you use a applicator tip or you use a sable hair brush or you use a sable hair sable hair brush or a applicator tip so here you can see you have a cavity which is dried and isolated you've got a good outline form you can see two small specks here where there is deep so we had to go a little deep here you've got lovely duck tails very beautiful now we are going to take this varnish with the help of an applicator tip we are going to dip it and apply it on the floor of the cavity a bit of it will go on the walls after you apply wait for about 2 minutes it dries after it dries again apply another coat one coat is not enough because very often some porosity is remain now if you see na especially the lay girls they apply nail polish the varnish that nail polish is something one coat is not enough same way it is the same uh, way in which you apply this having understood this now let's look at what cavity liner cavity liners are one step higher than uh cavity varnish they function a little bit more better than cavity varnish okay so what they do they are thin material layers of materials that primarily provide a barrier to protect the dentine from residual reactants diffusing out of the restoration and all oral fluids uh that may penetrate leaky tooth restoration surfaces i repeat cavity liner are thin layers of material used mainly to provide a barrier to protect the dentine from residual reactions diffusing out of the restoration of oral fluid that may penetrate leaky tooth restoration surfaces so it is essentially an aqueous or volatile suspension or dispersion of zinc oxide calcium hydroxide or glass ionomer so to be make, uh, make you understand very simply it is something like a varnish in which there is either zinc oxide there is calcium hydroxide or glass ionomer particles dispersed so when it is applied in a thin layer in order to elicit a particular pulpal response so when it is applied in a thin layer what happens is the varnish with that medicament that is either glass ionomer or zinc oxide or glass uh, calcium hydroxide coats your dentine uh, exposed dentine the primary purpose being to serve as an intermediate bonding material between the tooth and the restoration the preferred thickness for the liner is 0.5 mm this is how you need to understand what a cavity liner is now having understood a varnish here is a natural gum copol or resin dissolved in an organic solvent it is a plain 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 thing gum copal or resin which is dissolved and it is job is only to prevent micro leakage okay to that when we add or suspend or disperse calcium hydroxide zinc oxide or glass ionomer as a medicament it becomes a cavity liner again there is only chemical protection okay bases on the other hand are used to provide physical mechanical chemical thermal and electrical protection to the dental pulp because the varnishes and liners are very thin and they cannot provide heat protection they cannot provide electrical protection and physical or mechanical protection so the forces of mastication or when you are condensing the restoration the mechanical forces it cannot prevent those okay it cannot insulate the tooth against those for that you require a base 
So again, I repeat the bases I used to provide physical, chemical, thermal, mechanical, and electric protection to the dangerous pipe. The base supplement mechanical support for the restoration by distributing local stresses from the restoration to the underlying dentine surface. The ideal thickness of the cavity base is 1 to 2 millimeters. Now, here you have to be very sure you should have it between the cavity is below the dentino enamel junction and then you put the base maybe about 1 to 1.5 to 2 and there should be enough place for the final restoration. So if you are having amalgam, you should have at least about 2 millimeter minimum of amalgam thickness to have good resistance form and good retention form. So you have to be very careful when you talk these. So now what are the functions of a base? The functions of a base are it provides thermal protection to the pulp. So as uh, Manjusha Madam told you, PCB, physical, mechanical, chemical, PCB, uh, physical, chemical, biological, or PCM, physical, chemical, mechanical, thermal, PCMTE, right? You can use any of these mnemonics, so it's easy for you to learn. So there's thermal protection of the pulp. It protects the pulp from mechanical trauma, protects the pulp from chemical irritation, acid penetration. It has a therapeutic effect on the pulp and it protects the pulp from electrical stimulation caused by dissimilar metals or restoration. Right? The different base materials that can be used are zinc phosphate, zinc oxide eugenol, reinforced zinc oxide eugenol, glass isomers, polycarboxylates and MTA. Now, you must know all these uh, cements constituents. You should know each composition in detail. You should know the different types available, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, whatever. You should know the chemical setting and the way you mix these, mixing characteristics or handling, all these things. Now, all these cements, again, can come as short notes to you. Okay? So, you have to understand. Then the other question will be, which of these cements can have chemical bonding? So, we all know glass ionomer, polycarboxylate, right? MTA also to a certain, uh, is, is one that has got chemical bonding. Now, the next question is, what is the type of chemical bonding? So, you have the OOH, COOH molecules that will combine chemically with the hydroxy molecules. Hydroxy appetite molecules. COOH is the hydroxy molecule which combined with the hydroxy appetite molecules present in the tooth structure. So, you must know all these things. You must know the composition and constituents of all these cements because they are extremely, extremely important for you to understand this and uh, be able to talk about them. Then, I, then if you go back, we said it should have a therapeutic effect on the pulp, right? So, if you are going to use zinc oxide eugenol in a deep cavity, it is good because it's going to have a therapeutic effect. But if you're going to use zinc phosphate, well, it has got a very good compressive strength. It is very hard, but its acidity is so much that the pulp will get extremely irritated. The tooth might become extremely sensitive. So ideally, you need to first put a varnish and then a zinc phosphate base. Also, for zinc oxide eugenol, definitely first the zinc oxide eugenol base goes and then on top of that a varnish goes. You need to understand this thing carefully. Again, glass ionoma and polycarboxylate. Varnish first or glass ionoma first? Definitely glass ionoma first because if you put varnish, then the glass ionoma or even the polycarboxylate cement cannot chemically bond to the tooth structure, tooth surface. Same thing with MTA. So you must use a little bit of your logic and then answer. And for that, you need to read this thing. If you open up, I, I always, I swear by Anusavis, it's such a lovely book. You can just read it over a, a period of time. You'll be able to imbibe all these little, little nuances that are there that are very, very important for you to understand. So you have got a liner. You've, uh, now you've understood what is a varnish. You've understood what is a liner. You've understood what is a base. Now, suddenly there is something called a sub-base. In the middle of all these things, some examiners like to put a little bit of a googly, as we call it, you know, which is called a sub-base. Now, sub-base in teeth with deep cavities, which is very close to the pulp, 
Sometimes a layer of calcium hydroxide can be applied as a sub base. For example, you get dicat. So in that, when you are removing the carious dentine, and only one area that is dental carious, so you take a round bar and remove that thing, and that area gets deep. So you could probably place in dicat as a sub base, and then after that you can put your normal base, or you can put your uh, liner or varnish or whatever, and go ahead and give the rest to.